So 900 grade A, about 1000 dirham. Wow. Okay, wow. Yeah. That was incredible. Dubai is the city of the future. The world's tallest skyline, luxury man-made islands in the sea, 16-lane highways, driverless metros, Lamborghini police cars, a minister of happiness. The place oozes the fill of a modern city fueled by the petrodollar. But Dubai's oil reserves are relatively modest compared to its big brother Abu Dhabi, and oil wasn't discovered here in the UAE till 1958. Yet before all of this, these were desert dwellings, a very tough place to live without the modern technologies of today though people have been inhabiting these parts for 7,000 years. So what brought them here? What kept them here? And what initiated this bustling commercial metropolis? It all started from something as small as your finger. Pearls. Skydiving was once a very lucrative industry here in the UAE, dating back over 7,000 years. Due to the shallow depths of the sea here, people were able to go down on one breath of air to the bottom of the seabed and pick up oysters, which often contained pearls. And due to the rarity of these pearls, they had a very high price. Until the mid-1900s, the Japanese discovered how to create synthetic pearls, which crashed the price of pearls and diminished the pearl industry here in the UAE. Now I want to find out a little bit more about the pearl diving industry. So I'm going down to Al Suwaidi Pearl Farm, where they still practice the traditional techniques of pearl diving. But before I do, I must first learn how to do free diving. So I'm going to do my paddy free diving course in Fajira. Welcome to Fajira. You see why I like coming here. So I've come down here to Divers Down in Fajira where I'm going to be taking my free diving paddy course. And the expert today is Yuri. Hi. How, how are you doing, Yuri? Thanks, a lot. I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, so tell me, I presume you are you've been doing this a long time? Yeah, I've been doing it like for almost more than ten years. Ten years? Yeah. And so what depths do people go in free diving? Well you'll be surprised that uh, actually it's quite natural for us to do that. Uh, Right, if you talk about world records, you know, the deepest person did it uh, like 214, which is official record. 214, 214 meters. 214 meters deep. That's right. On yeah. one breath of air. Exactly. So what's different about free diving is you don't have scuba gear. So there, it's one breath of air and, and the experts can get down below 200 meters. That's incredible. So how do we get into this? Because I obviously can't go that deep. I don't even know if I can hold my breath for very long. So how do we practice and get better at it? What's the first stages? The key in free diving is relaxation. So that's the first thing you need to master. So once you're able to do yes. that, uh, there are certain uh, breathing techniques that we'll be going through. Uh, and then main thing we'll be talking about the breathing cycle. Yeah. So that's the way you breathe uh, before, right before you start the dive and after the dive. So essentially as we're going down the pressure gets a lot stronger and same effect as when you're landing in a plane and you get pressure in your ears you get the same thing when you go down in water but a lot faster so the way to overcome that is to basically equalize by you know blowing into your nose and it, it uh, equalizes the pressure in the ears and we have to keep doing that as we go down. If we start feeling pain in the ears we've gone too far. That's already too late. It's too late. Yeah. So we have to do it before that. Before it's... you feel any discomfort. It's a very different experience learning free diving because first of all, you don't have any equipment. You can't actually breathe under there. Now, generally you would think that why would anyone want to do that? But it really gives you a lot of freedom and a real feeling that you're actually among the fish. You can actually get closer to a lot of fish and you actually, you know, can feel a much more natural way of diving. 
But one of the things that I've been learning from Yuri is because you don't have all the equipment, you're not focused on looking around you as much as you're focused on internally and keeping calm, keeping relaxed and understanding your body. So it's a real internal experience. Now, is there any specific technique to getting in or I'm just jumping in? Uh, no, there is nothing, no, nothing specific there. All right. <laughs> You wanted to wear your weight belt before that? <laughs> I'll put the weight belt on first. Uh, yeah, get, get the fins on. Okay. Okay, so I managed to reach 10 meters below the depth on one breath of air. And what I was doing essentially is pulling down on the rope uh, to guide me. Um, now, the next stage is to be able to go down just using my legs by finning. Uh, obviously, it requires a bit more energy in the, in the legs, but it's uh, uh, essentially swimming without the rope. Getting along. Yeah, doing good. Yeah. Doing good. Yes. Yeah. Free motion is almost, almost perfect. Going down. Yes. You need to work on some certain things. Being more, more parallel to the line. Not looking up. Being just, vertical as I go down. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're quite, quite looking up sometimes. Yeah. Uh, right. Other than that, you're very relaxed. Yeah. Just floating up. That's the main thing. So I'm really happy that I actually managed to get to 10 meters because it's quite daunting the thought of going 10 meters below the water and just one breath of air, but I managed to do it. Now, in order to actually complete the, uh, the, the paddy free diving qualification, I need to be able to get to 16 uh, and finning as well. So I didn't manage to complete that today, um, but I'm not gonna push it today because, you know, I've done a lot of dives. So I think I'm gonna come back another day to actually complete the course. Uh, so I think that's over and out for me today. So I finished the practical today and it was a lot of work actually, a lot of diving today. Now the course actually consists of a theory session, a pool session, practical as we did today in open water and that can sometimes take two days. It's probably going to take me two days I expect. Super. Well I've had a fun time here in Fajira doing it at Divers Down. Thanks very much. Okay. You're welcome. See you soon. So if this looks like a bit of a change of scenery, it's because we've come from Fajira down to Rasakema to meet with Al Sawedi Pearl Farm, who are one of the few people who still practice the traditional style of pearl diving. Now it's very different to what I've been learning uh, in free diving with all the equipment. They do it the old fashioned way, the traditional way. So uh, I'm here to meet with Mohammed, who's taking us out, but uh, I don't know where he is, so. Hi Mohammed, it's Paris. I'm here. Somewhere, I'm, I'm by the, uh, by the marina. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll come find you. He's on the boat already. Assalamu alaikum. Kef alaikum. It's me, Paris. Hello, hello. Touch your Okay, this is the uh, traditional style pearl diving boat. 
and uh, we're gonna head out now to where there's a, a float and uh, we're gonna go find some pearls. So we're just taking a boat out here from the marina to where the slightly deeper waters where there's flotation devices where they actually farm the pearls. Now nobody really does the old form of pearl diving because it's very dangerous and your success ratio of finding a pearl was about one in every hundred oysters. So pearl farming massively increases that and I'm going to find out a little bit about how they do this. So this is my friend Othman and he's an expert on pearls and you're going to explain to us a little bit about the different types of pearls and how you collect them. This is a natural pearl. So this these one. are the ones you actually find out in the sea yes, and the rest that you have pearl. here you this farm. Is farming, this another. And is there a difference in the price between natural yes. and farmed? The natural is more expensive than cultural okay. because it's more rare. And uh, the cultural pearl, is start, the size in our farm starts from 6 milli until 13 milli. The grade we have grade A, B, C, D. So and this uh, is how you grade them, yes, we, and depending on the different grade is how much they will be uh, yes, worth uh, in the market. Yes, uh, we grading by uh, luster of the pearl, and the surface, and the shape have round, have semi round, have a baroque, and the uh, color and the size. So and what is the chance of finding a pearl in, in a natural pearl? Natural pearl, one percent. Example, one thousand oyster, ten pearl, nine of them of them is small and one big. Right. And cultural pearl, sixty percent. Wow. So talk to us about the cost. What would be the cost two, of two hundred? About two hundred fifty dirham one piece. Yeah. And this uh, eight milli grade B about three hundred seventy dirham. And this nine milli grade C about three uh, three hundred dirham one piece. Right. So this because is the most size. expensive because it's it's bigger than this one, but it's higher quality than Example, this one. Example uh, nine hundred grade A about one thousand dirham. Right. One piece. How many pearls do you farm throughout the year? Uh, we farm uh, 20,000 oyster. From 20,000 oyster we have about uh, this year 14,000 pearls. 14,000 pearls a year, wow. Yes, and uh, from uh, that uh, quantity we have only 10% has high quality grade A. Yeah. And other have we B, C and uh, D and low quality and baroque. So you pearl. might get 1,400 pearls a year which are of great quality. Yes. The pearl diver when he dive, he have two rope with him when he dive. First rope with the basket, he put on his neck like this. This to collect the oyster. He stay about one minute or two minutes under the water, uh, collect the oyster. When he finish, he take out and give the sign to the hauler of the boat. Three times, then he pull him back with the oyster. And uh, first, uh, another rope. So you're using a weight to pull you down? Yes. Why, why do you need the weight? Can't you just go down? It's, uh, d because the pearl diver, he, before he dive about 50 to 200 dive in one day. He, need to, to, uh, he don't need so to swim. It's about productivity. Day. Yes. Quick. Put the stone, pull him down, and okay. the other pull him back. Okay. He don't swim. This is no script, but this is made from wood. Before they make from turtle shell. Right. Because turtle shell work in the, under the water. Uh, because when he got more pressure, the turtle shell close his nose more. But now we need to save the turtles, so but we use wood. Wood. Okay. But this, this is a kind of uh, nose clip. And this is a cloth from cotton, a black color. This protect him from jellyfish and the color to protect him from the shark. Shark? Yes. Have you told me about sharks? <laughs> <laughs> There's sharks here? Yes. <laughs> but small ones? Yes, small ones. But not inside lagoon, outside. Outside, okay. Yes. But here you're okay. I presume this also keeps you warm. Uh, no. No, not very well. Because they, before they go, they dive, they will dive in uh, summer. In summer. Only in summer. Pearl diver, men dive season in summer, four months, from because May it, to August. Because it's warm. Oh, yes, warm. And today we're in January. Because now, they, in, in this time, in, in the winter, they stop. They don't pearl. Uh, pearl. So, so this is way too cold to yes, so pearl dive. They don't. They stop in. Uh, so I'm going to do it in the cold.
I'm about to find out why pearl divers don't do this in January. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Pretty cold. So, got the dough skip on. Here's my basket. So keep that around my neck. Practice the breathing techniques. How do I let you know when I'm ready? Yes, when you're ready, you you go. You open your phone and then I give you the uh, I think the my fence does. <laughs> Look at that! Woo! <laughs> All right, I'm a pearl diver now. Woo! Oh. Okay, it's pretty cold in here though. <laughs> uh, okay, give me a rope. All right. There's the basket. Okay, pretty cold in there in January. Woo! But got an oyster. Now that's a natural oyster, so. Probably not a good chance that there's a pearl in it, but we're going to open it up now and find out how they actually open these things and see if I got one. So this this knife we use uh, now to open. Uh, we don't. Uh, we use this to open the oyster. Right. We have this sharp knife. Now the oyster. Oh, okay. Oyster is sort of semi-open. Yes. <laughs> He's okay. saying hello. Now we cut the muscle. Then he die and open. Okay. This. And this the oyster wow. on the side. He have a mouth, he take water from this side and he filtering the water from this side. He eat the plankton and he filtering the water for plankton. And this a mental, this a lime. Right. The, uh, the mental, the oyster produce the pearl nacre to uh, build his shell from outside and inside. When we seed, we put the bead in the gonad in this area. In the so, so the pearl would be in the meat? Yes, inside. In, in the, the middle. Gonad. Now so, we search. So when you eat oysters, the different oyster. Different oyster. Yes. This so this, so that's why I've never found a pearl in my mouth. Yes, that different. That, that I also we eat that uh, this oyster, but uh, only the muscle. Okay. Okay. Now we search the pearl. So you put your thumb in. Okay. I feel something. You can take out. Oh really? Something. Okay. Ah, that's the pearl. So how do I? Do I, do I just break it open like this. Yes, like this. You so, take out. Right. That's it there. Yes. Wow. Okay, wow. Yes. That's incredible. And that's perfectly round. Nice. That's a good one, right? Nice luster, yeah. How that's so like? that's a good color. Yes. Nice luster, creamish color. So what would that uh, be graded as? This is grade B. B. Yes, B because high luster. And so that's worth around 270 dirhams. Like this, yes. 300. 300. 300 yes. Nice. Nice quality. Wow. And and then we can also eat the meat. Yeah, okay, when we found the uh, when we found the pearl, oh, we found the pearl. We wash with the fresh water like this. Okay, and we use salt to remove the sea smell. Like right, that gets rid of the, the smell. But that doesn't damage the no, because the oyster, the pearl nectar from carbonate calcium, same the the salt. Wow. There we go. So that's a pearl that I've caught. Look at that. And the mussel for eat. Yeah. We eat the mussel. You can eat that raw? Yes. So we can eat it now? Yes. So you just give that a wash.
straight from the seabed. Mmm. So it's a little bit harder than most oysters. Yes. Mm. Osman, thank you so oh, much. That's well, really that's been incredible to learn all about your yeah, culture and the yeah. history of your uh, of the Emirati people. And I'm really happy that I managed to find quite a nice pearl. Yes, a nice one, yes. Seven yeah. million, nice quality. Super. Uh, thank you very much. Well, that's all from me. That's pearl diving, and I'll see you next time.